Well, the pressure is very much on now, isn't it? Not only for me to keep this exceptionally high-tier Game of Thrones story going, but also for our new character, Lord Ansa Cargill, who has had a whole heap of misery piled onto him very, very suddenly during yesterday's episode. So it's a very brief recap. Our previous character, uh, our, our late father, Lord Merrick, was visiting the tavern with his good childhood friend, Lord Varys, the, the Lord Varys, and who would happen to be at that same tavern other than Lord Galfred, our father's childhood bully, tormentor, uh, turned brother, revealed later in their lives that they're actually separated at birth, long-term rivals and great enemies, and Lord Galfred, while they were in that tavern, took uh, took umbrage with Varys, was very angry at Varys after some some drunken words were exchanged and made an attempt on Varys, made, made an attempt to fight him or maybe even kill him. And our father, the glorious Lord Merrick, stepped in between them. Now, I wouldn't say this was from a place of selfishness, sorry, selflessness. I wouldn't say it was from a place of defending his friend more than it was from his ambition and his ruthlessness, two very key traits for his character. Stepped in to fight the man who had tormented him as a child, uh, the guy who represents everything he didn't have as a child, and it cost him everything. He was brutally mauled in the battle until eventually, sadly, dying only a few months later of his very wounds. But he did hang on long enough for a very tragic event to occur. His wife, a niece, our current character's mother, warmed to him. They didn't technically fall in love. They, were, they weren't lovers. Uh, they weren't even particularly close to that. But they were getting closer to one another. At least enough for now her uh, to be uh, widowed, to have that widowed trait. The light in her life has been snuffed, according to the description there. So a very tragic, very Game of Thrones story that she started maybe to fall in love with this man right at the very bitter end. It's so tragic. During all that time, of course, uh, our, our father, Lord Merrick, got all of his titles by doing some nondescript work for House Targaryen. Got given this land. It's not particularly good land. In fact, it's probably one of the worst counties in the game. But he was given that nonetheless for whatever services he rendered. And all of that was for nothing. Because now that king that we had that favor with, that we had, uh, that we were on the council of a spy master, having worked our way up there, was deposed by King Stannis the Manis himself. And in turn... Our father's good childhood friend, Varys, is now a wanderer. He doesn't have a position on the council, and I thought that, you know, maybe Stannis will just make him a uh, spy master again. That's actually not the case. He is gone entirely from the council. Stannis is uh, appointed Lord Howard, and that leaves Varys a wandering, lonely man with no job, no position of power anymore, no best friend. But just as our character, our previous character, uh, was defending Varys, Varys gained the trait loyal. You kind of imagine he would, right? Takes his relations more seriously than most. Now, a lot of people in the comments suggested just using uh, console commands, whatever, to bring Varys over to our realm to be our character's educator. Now, I like the idea behind that, but personally, that would be quite immersion-breaking to me. So I turned to the Steam Workshop to try and help solve that problem. Now, I don't like the way invites work in CK3. I think they're far too restrictive. You have to have a 100 opinion with someone to move to their court. But in this case, the loyal Varys who was, uh, you know, who, who was saved by our previous character, who, who laid down his life for Varys, who doesn't have anywhere else to go, probably would join our court. So I found this fantastic mod, um, which name escapes me now that I can't remember, but I'll add it to the collection down below, which allows us to have a bit more flexibility with inviting people to court. More specifically, it adds more opinions with them. So in this case, Varys is a wandering lowborn and has a decent opinion of our character. Of course, he is loyal to, which we know should take into effect, but doesn't sadly, of course, couldn't be taken into effect with the mod. He will join us now. Barely, but he will join us. He will accept with a plus five. And I think we've got to bring him to court. We've got to offer him the job as our educator because I think him and our mother, Anise, comparing to mind her skill set and her, her traits, they would be out for revenge against Lord Galfred. And we've got the two perfect mentors to make this happen. Our mother, who was an assassin turned lover of our father, and then Lord Varys, his best friend. I think that is a f fantastic, tremendous start. Let's bring him over. Varys has joined our court. Well, he hasn't quite yet. He's going to be traveling over. Oh, or he did come directly. Um, sometimes, of course, they do travel over. Maybe he didn't. I just went by too fast. Oh, it departed for court. Yeah, he did actually travel over. Fair enough. Welcome, Lord Varys. Welcome to our court. He's put on some armor. He's ready to fight. But we don't need you in that sort of battle, my friend. We need you in a much more... In a battle you're more suited to. And that is the battle of education, my friend. 
Varys is going to take us on as a ward. The man's a genius. Of course, he's an elusive shadow. He's patient. He's diligent. But he is ruthless, much like our previous character's father. Varys might even be considered the father that, sadly, Lord Ansa is never going to know. Now, I also saw a suggestion from someone in the comments saying we should call him Anselric, as in we should take that kind of suffix that a few members of this dynasty have, uh, Arik and, and, and Eric and Merrick, throw it on the end. I like that combination of bird and the dynasty name. So we'll definitely do that. We'll name him kind of po posthumously in honor of his father. Call him Anselric. I think that's pretty good. That was a pretty common medieval thing to do, right? It's a pretty common Victorian thing to do as well. So we're going to roll with that. When I, I'll probably have to do it between episodes. I don't think I can rename him now, can I? Oh, I can. Lovely. Anselric. A much better name. I think that suits it a lot better. It does sound very Game of thrones -y. You're right. And now all we have to do is sit here and... Let our mother rule as regent. She likes us. Of course, she's our mother. She doesn't have traits that would lead her to compassion, though, right? Which does affect the regency, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, personality has compassion for child. Mine is 20, right? She's also deceitful. She's self-interested, but I think it's very easy to believe that she would be self-interested in murdering Lord Galfred, who's potentially ruined everything. She was just a low-born lady, an assassin sent to kill him. She's now ruling a, a county. Sure, it's not... It's nothing major, you know, it's nothing special. It's not one of the big ancient cities of the Game of Thrones world, but it's something, right? It's, she's climbing that ladder. Varys is here too. And I think they would be friends. She tried to obtain you gold. This was an abuse of power. She unsuccessfully furthered mandate. I hope she doesn't ruin everything. I, I do think that her self-interest would be killing Lord Galfred, as ours probably will be. Now, on the subject of mods, I have added another mod as well. Um, I mean, I added one that changed the cursor, but that's not massively relevant. I've added another one that allows you to declare people as your rivals. Now, this is kind of fun. We can't do it right now because we don't dislike him enough. But we can declare him our rival when our opinion of him drops. And this, this mod is kind of balanced because we can't do anything to get our opinion of him lower right so we've just gotta 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 hope that that falls oh no greetings nephew i call upon you to honor our outstanding agreement and formally join me as an ally oh no it seems i have little choice he forced an alliance on us i'm very concerned about this guy because if we die he takes our land and that would be very unfortunate because i like this branch of the dynasty but realistically, all we can do right now is sit here and hope for a good education, both from our character's mother, both from Varys, and hope that between them they can turn us into an intrigue monster. Bear in mind this character's intelligent, and we've got the best intrigue character in the world educating us. I think we'll be fine. You know, I think we can pull this off. We've become a bold planner. I'm not entirely sure how, given that we are a child and don't have any personality traits yet. Maybe that's just like the, the default, the generic personality until we fill it in. What's kind of interesting as well is I've got another mod. I think it's called Unfinished Business. Again, if it's not, it's down in the description that uh, passes on opinions, right? So because this guy was our predecessor's uh, rival, we've also got a minus 50 with him. But that is increasing by 5.91 a year. It's very possible we might not ever be able to declare him our rival. We might not want him to know we're our rival. We might want to be that knife in the dark. And I think that's very much the approach we probably will go for, right? It doesn't matter if he's our rival or not. It doesn't matter if we've got a piece Murder is still murder. Oh, dear. My dear son, I have some proposals for tightening up the crown's authority in the realm. All I need to do is your seal sitting alongside my own so that your vassals don't think you unjust. Okay. She wants to... She wants to enact a limited crown authority, the slightly higher tier. But because she is doing it, we get convenient scapegoats. So we actually cancel out a lot of these relevant negatives. Glory Hound Vassal opinion minus 15, but we actually get plus 15 for 10 years. Interesting. Sorry, minus 5, but we get plus 15. So 10 years later, when we're 12, it would obviously all kick off. It would cause 35 strife. Um, honestly, we're a baby. We're a baby. How can I say no to that? Role play the character. He's a two-year-old. He would just say, yes, mummy, of course. Well, he might not say anything. He might not be able to talk yet. Midas, delicacy. Ah, oh, Midas is our our father's pet hawk that I presume is, has been passed on to us, remember? Here he is. Midas the hawk, four years old. A very friendly hawk he is. A stout woman I vaguely recognize as belonging to the kitchen staff approaches me just as I enter the garden with my hawk, Midas. Sure, you've heard, but the latest 
delicacies on everyone's tongue. Uh, it's hawk. It would reflect well on you to keep up with the culinary trends. Um, go ahead. Animals are food first and foremost. You think this kid would want to cook his father's hawk into a uh, meal? No, it's one of the few things he's got left of his father. Absolutely not. Midas' opinion of you increases. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'd probably have an increased opinion of someone if I didn't bake them into a pie. Oh. Oh, that's good for intrigue, though, right? Hold on. There is so much to see and smell and touch. Where do you come from? Why is the sky blue? What is beyond that hill? Please, please, I want to go and find out. Getting the trait curious. I think that's fantastic for an intrigue education, right? Is it? Am I wrong? Oh, no, it's neutral. Okay. Well, honestly, that's fine. That's fine. That was, like, arguably the second best outcome we could have got, right? It's not, it's not a negative, which is what I'm more concerned with. So, someone in the comments asked about our father's bastard daughter. She is in our court, along with her mother. Marla Clint is here. She's a fornicator. And Lucia Hill Clint is... Uh, she's intelligent. She's a chip off the old block, much like our characters. In fact, they look very similar as well. I don't know if there's ever a way... I, d I don't think this is a secret. I mean, she knows that... That this child is our half-sister. I wonder if she'll ever release the information. She, she could... I mean, we don't have to believe it, though, right? We might not believe it. I'm sure that was a very common thing in the Game of Thrones world where random children would be would be claimed to be the child of lords, right? I find my hawk Midas sleeping in my chambers, and I sit down beside him. I'm greeted by a quiet, confused chirp. Oh. However, as I start running my fingers through his brown feathers, he quickly settles once more with a sigh of contentment. Oh, this is so nice. Oh, God, this hawk is going to die soon, isn't it? How long do hawks live for? Oh, God. Oh, God, it's going to break this child's heart. First his father and then his pet hawk. Oh, God. Oh. Hello. This curious animal reminded me of you. Who's this? The High Septum. Okay. This curious animal reminded me of you, and I'm certain it will bring you much joy. It's been given the name Bethany. And I assure you, it's a hawk of great character. <gasps> Why is the High Septum giving us a hawk? I appreciate it. I mean, it's because we've got the same leads, right? We're technically, we're technically on the same level there. Oh. Thank you. How lovely. Oh my god, he's given us another hawk. Bethany the hawk. She's a friendly lady hawk. And then we've got Midas, who's a friendly male hawk. I wonder if, because there's also a mother and father tab there, are we about to become an expert hawk breeder? Well, that would be amazing. I don't know if that can happen, but we'll see. I mean, why else would there be a mother and father part of that tab, though? Ah, another one with Midas. Is this going to be all of our childhood events or just about this bloody hawk? I find my hawk playing outside, playing with some children. As he spots me, he flies over, and I greet him with soft words and a gentle pet. See, to forget my worries when I feel his soft brown feathers under my hands. Brilliant. This kid's never going to have any stress to worry about at this rate. Uh, hello. So the charming Lord Anserich of Briarcrest. I'm pleased to tell you I've been courting a woman who's part of your court, Orana. Today she agreed to be my wife. Who is Orana? Hello. How are you doing? Oh, she's very good. Uh, I know you might think it's a regular or even think it's an unsuitable match. Even so, my lord, my liege, Lord Danos, has already assented. Thus, I ask you your leave to properly marry this woman I so adore. Okay. Um, she's going to leave our court. Don't want to be bothered by a relevant court yet. No, uh, sure. Permission granted. Why would we care? We're just a child. She's not relevant to us and not really relevant to our court. Yeah, goodbye. See you later. So there's not really much for me to do right now, uh, to be completely honest. We're a four-year-old. We've got 147 gold, right? I could build something in our domain, but I feel like it's much better to sit on that money and use it for future investments. I'm not going to spend every penny we've got. Maybe if we have a spare 140 gold or whatever, then I'll build some sort of economy building. But we do need some money to grease the wheels, maybe of our character's education. Maybe for eventually doing a little spying. Our mother's intelligent enough to know that she's the regent. So I think we'll we'll kind of play by her standards for a while. Oh, and now our spy master's gone. Goodbye, Alisan. Hold on, our spy master's gone. You know, I think I might just have the man for the job. Lord Varys, welcome. I mean, it's not exactly the Red Keep, and it's not exactly as prestigious a post, but you are the man for the job. What's going on there? Task Councilor Castellan. I wonder if that's one of the mods I've added that's conflicted with Game of Thrones. That's okay. We can just ignore it. I'll, I'll, I can sort it between episodes. Don't you worry. What? Varys has come to me with unsettling news. My unmarried mother, Anise, has been showing signs that led him to believe she is with child. Varys strongly suspects my 
the, the father is my chancellor, Edmund. There's no way to be certain without questioning my mother and immediately bringing the whole matter out into the open. There is, however, an option. We could send Anise into seclusion at the Septon Sound until the child is born safely away from prying eyes. No one needs to know what occurred or who the true mother of the child ever was, if indeed it even survives. Anise's reputation as well would be safe. She is lustful. Interesting. Send her into seclusion? This never happens? She would just... In seclusion until the child is born? Should deal with the consequence of her indiscretion. Oh, God. Oh, my mother. She's got a vice, and that vice is... This man? Oh, okay. Well, fair enough, I suppose. It's either that, or we lose 25 renown. We spend 75 prestige. We learn of her lover's secret, and she spent... Oh, God. We lose 25 renown, spend 25... That's not that bad when I say it like that. Now we've got to ask, who would be more influential on little answer it? Would it be Varys? What's his opinion of Varys? 15. He's also got 37 intrigue, but you have to bear in mind. His opinion of his mother is only plus 12, and she's less manipulative. I feel like Varys might... Might have won our little guy over. He's five. He's just going to listen to the person he likes more. That's how five-year-olds work. Oh, goodbye, mother. Oh, my God. And Varys became our regent. Oh, my God. Maybe he's playing us like a fool. Maybe maybe this has been Varys' grand plan all along. He gets Galfred into fighting our father. Takes the blow. Makes it look like a standard, a standard brawl. And then takes over the realm. My God. What a genius. No, of course, that's not the case. That would be, that would be a fun twist. But that's not the case. Uh, my courtier, Lysa, approached me. Raging her eyes, hawk in her hand. She thrusts the hawk into my face. I see it's my dear Midas. Well, this monster ripping apart my things. What wasn't ripped to bits was covered in piss. Um, honestly, we could say I'll compensate you. Or we'll say, good one, Midas. <laughs> it's a five-year-old. He would just be happy to see his bird, let's be honest. Ah, oh, she's back. We have tidings from Septon Sound. Anise has given birth and the deed is done. And the entire It's as if the scandal has never happened. Shall we call for her to return home? Put this business to rest. She might gain melancholic. She might lose lustful. She might gain humble or content. She can remain where she is. I care not. Oh. Now again, oh, character's five. And I feel like I feel like in this situation, Varys would have a lot of power. I mean, he's already he's our regent, so ultimately he gets to make the decision. Do they like one another? I wish I knew. I really wish I knew whether they liked one another, because that would be. That would be kind of fascinating to find out. But, I mean, this kid would want to see his mother back, okay? Why has she gone away? Bring her home. He'd probably be quite upset by that. Let's bring her home. Because I think she's in... I, d I don't think they are rivals or enemies. I think Varys just wanted to deal with that discreetly for the good of the realm. So let's bring her back. Varys is not an, an, Varys is not an enemy. They've got a shared goal here, okay? She departed for your court. So she's actually traveling over. My hawk Midas flies into the gun just as I'm heading inside. Uh, as I stop to give a greeting, I see something moving from the direction of Midas came from. It's a parrot. Following closely behind, Midas' new friend whistles as I approach, and they both seem happy to greet me. Oh! A pet parrot as well. My god, we really are collecting all the birds, aren't we? That's very appropriate. Okay, let's have a look then. Uh, the parrot doesn't have a name. I get to name it. Hello! As I crouch beside my new parrot, carefully stroking yellow feathers, I realize I'm yet to give her a name. Oh! We call a Celise, Beloved, Calliope, or Polly. Um, what would a child call a parrot? Flappy. I know that because it's the first name that came to my brain, so naturally that makes perfect sense. Flappy the parrot. Hello? While playing with my toy bow, I fell and scraped my knee. Just as I regained my feet, my mother came walking down the path asking if I was alright. Be brave, son. It'll just be fine. I'm here to help. Just listen to what I have to say and you'll learn how to avoid this ever happening again. Oh... She has 20 opinion of 15 years. Possible outcomes. We either gain martial intrigue or I can handle this on my own. Well, we might as well go for... It's a 30% chance we increase our martial by two and our intrigue by one. That's nice. But... 50-50. If we get that intrigue, I'll be quite happy about that. We didn't. We got the martial. But that's okay. We've already got eight intrigue, so I'm not too upset about that. Hello? We've charmed a courtier. J Jelona, great. Uh, you're very perceptive. I'm glad you like my hawk. It is a lovely hawk. We've got an empty council position too. We're looking for a new marshal. Um, Dunstan. Dunstan's fine. Just whoever's best for the job. Doesn't really matter when we're so irrelevant at this point. Flappy. Two brown eyes follow me as I cross the hallway and a quiet chirp breaks the silence as Flappy 
playfully pounces for my ankle. Apparent in her prime, she nonetheless, nonetheless leaves no mark on me. She flies away. I see she's left me a gleaming gift. Oh, two gold. How lovely. Now, I'm specifically not looking around the map too much because I like to... Um, I think it's much more fascinating if we're just playing it from the perspective of our character here. But we'll take a look. I'll take a look for your benefit, dear viewer, in a second. As I clatter out into the courtyard, toy in hand, finally some time to play outside. My excitement is short-lived, however, and quickly replaced by confusion. Lucia is sitting on a bench, looking over the courtyard. The air around her hangs thick with ennui, and she barely even greets me as I approach. I make some friendly gestures towards the open space, even proffering my toy. But she sighs and shakes her head. What do I do now? Come on, Lucia. Come on and play. Who's Lucia? <gasps> it's his half-sister. Oh my god. That's insane. Uh, come on, Lucia. Come and play. If they become friends, that would be so goddamn nice. Um, oh, best leave them to it. No, let's try it. You can do nothing to rouse Lucia. Oh, you can't win them all. It would be nice, but it is kind of sad that they're... I suppose they're the, probably the only two kids at court, and they're very similar age too, right? Our character's six currently. She's eight. Oh, I, I do hope they become friends. That would be nice. Do it for Merrick. Oh, the buffoonery. In Edmund's inane efforts to improve my relations with my neighbors, my good-for-nothing chancellor has officially acknowledged Lord Clarence's claim to our domain? Oh, shit. Uh, he gains an unpressed claim on the Lordship of Briarcrest. Well, thank God we formed an alliance with our, I'm sure, absolutely not treacherous uncle. Ooh. Someone is creating the Liberty Faction against King Stannis. Fair enough. Let's have a look at Stannis then. How's he doing? How's he getting along? He has pneumonia. Oh dear, that's a critical health penalty, my friend. But he also has raccuous entertainment. He's hale. He has reduced disease symptoms. And he's stubborn. So he simply just will not die. He's actually going to be totally fine. How's his son coming along then? Stannis II. He's coming out pretty well. Ambitious. Six Marshal. And then he's got Marcella, his other daughter. She's fine. That's really interesting. Okay. Well, we'll keep a close eye on him, but I'm not really that bothered again. We're a child. We really, really care about what's going on in our in our garden, to be honest. And apparently, every other bird life going. And speaking of which, it's Flappy. Thank you, my friend. We stroke Flappy and lose another 10 stress. This kid is going to have absolutely zero stress for a very, very long time. If if not forever, if we keep all these parrots. Right, let's just get rid of some of these notifications. There's no reason not to have all of this going on in the background, huh? Uh, you can pardon criminals in prison criminals. We can uh, pardon her. I Again, he's a child. He wouldn't care. Maybe when he's older, he might think about it a little more. But, but again, she's just a random courtier. Oh, God, we are now entrenched in a regency. Oh, dear. Sharing power in an entrenched regency. Are we going to be able to end this? I mean, if his education comes out well and Varys ends up being a good tutor, they might become friends, at which point maybe we can convince him that we're ready to rule. Maybe Varys is doing it from a place of, of, of well-meaning. You know, maybe he is doing this just to ensure that the realm is, is in, a, in a firm grasp and led well. My heart, my dis Oh, no. Midas barely racks his eye into the room, his body beset by tremors and shallow breaths. My lord, he barely eats. My courtier gallant says as he hovers by Midas' side. His clearly is suffering from some sort of illness. I will pay for treatment. Of course we will. Oh, his health has improved. Oh god, does that mean improved as in like he's good? Health good. Okay, that's nice. Personality spoiled. Flappy the parrot is spoiled. Yes, he very much is. You're right. Oh, well, yes, she very much is. Apologies, Flappy. Very good friends. I would never offend Flappy. And it's all kicking off. Lord Paramount Willis Tyrell has declared war on Stannis. Wow, uh, a liberty war. I must choose to stand with King Stannis or join Lord Paramount Willis or stay neutral. Why has Willis gone to war? Do you think it's something to do with Mace? What happened to Mace the Ace then? He died of his wounds. Those were wounds I'm pretty sure he picked up during the war against King... Uh, sorry, against Robert Baratheon. So there's probably a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of tension there. I love the fact that Olena is his regent. It's like they're all puppeteering from behind the scenes, eh? Okay. Um, well, let's be sensible here. Let's assess the war. Stannis has 154,000 soldiers. Willis has 58,000. I think we do the sensible thing here and we declare for our king. King Stannis shall get all of my men. Whatever, take them take him. I could have said he gets enough and he would just use his default levies, but we'll just let him let him take everything. We've got to try and earn some favor here. We're not going to do anything with those troops, realistically. 
Now, here's a bit of a quandary from, uh, from you know, playing the character's perspective, from the role-playing perspective. We're an eight-year-old. We can swing the scales of power in our favor by giving Barris 100 gold. Or we can leverage piety and prestige. My, my, my question is, why would this child care? I understand as, a, as the player that I absolutely should be doing that to make our life easier in the future in case we really struggle to escape this, uh, this regency. But simultaneously, play the character. We invited Varys here. Let's suffer the consequences of doing that. Ooh, there is a scheme at court. Someone's plotting to kill Lysa. She was the one that liked my parrot, right? Or is that a different one? No, she was the one whose desk we had uh, th th that our hawk destroyed. Well, if someone murders her, that's fine. She probably got it out for our hawk anyway. She's probably the one that poisoned it. Oh, there it is. The deciding battle of this war. 124,000 House Lannister there leading the battle against 44,000. I think we're probably done. That's probably the end of this war. That'll be very, very decisive. 34%. 42,000 versus 149,000. They're not going to pull that back. They're at number three to one. L is for language. My guardian, Varys, teaches me well. Sometimes I hear him speaking in Balerian. That's what he speaks at home, I think. Well, I mean, he's, he's Lysini, right? Uh, while he mostly speaks common with me, he's trying to teach me some of his mother tongue. Keeping two languages in my head is hard, but perhaps it's worth the effort. Absolutely it is. I mean, that would certainly win Varys over. 86% chance we learn Valyrian. And we've done it. You learn Varys' language. That's fun. Common and Valyrian. Very, very useful, of course, for spying, scheming, and plotting as well. We just use that as our our day-to-day -day language around court, perhaps. I'm pleased to tell you I've been courting a young maiden who is part of your court. Alora. Oh, I remember her. Um, yep, whatever. I mean, we wouldn't mind, right? We don't really mind. She's a random courtier. She's not part of the council. You can have her. A friendship. I've played together with Carolee. Who's Carolee? Carolee Blackmont. Is she in our court? Or she's like a nearby realm? No, she's down in Dawn. Oh, how bizarre. Okay, fair enough. Well, I, I mean, I guess they, I guess they're acquainted somehow. Visiting the court, whatever. Um, the other day, she would let me borrow a favorite wooden sword. We're really getting along. And we're having so much fun. No one else makes me laugh like she does. So happy we know one another. Become friends. Or oh, you want the wooden sword back? Not a chance. No. He's not necessarily a bad kid. He's only just curious. I'm just happy we know one another. Made a childhood friend. That's going to be a core memory. Oh, okay. A big moment here. The feast is loud. Adults are boring and the food is not very good. My guardian of Varys seems to be enjoying himself, so I cannot catch his attention to tell him I do not want to be here. I'm sneaking out. Maybe there are other children around. We become impatient. Okay. It's not necessarily bad for... I, I really would think that would be an intrigue hit, but it's, it's, it's not at all. Learning minus two, opinion of liege minus two, hostile scheme power actually up by 15%. Wow, it's, it's actually very good for an intrigue character. Monthly prestige up by 15%. Impatient doesn't necessarily mean bad or sloppy or anything like that. It's just you, will, you would do a lot more to get things done, right? Uh, there are too many people. Time to hide under the table. No, he seems pretty good with people, given that he just made a friend. I'm going to pick something, of course, based on his character. He gives hostile skin resistance up by 25% too, so that one's also like pretty good for an intrigue character. And then we've got, at least I can keep eating for as long as I'm here. Gluttonous. I mean, he just made a friend and he's curious. I don't think he is the type to hide under a table. And I don't think he'd be... I, and I think, you know, his curiosity in this case, let's sneak out. Sneak out and go and have a look for some other friends. I think that suits him a lot better. And I think it's the best one there. The Lonely Child. Oh my god, it's Lucia again. It's his, it's his unknown half-sister. Lucia is sitting on the bench. Oh, isn't it strange how history has repeated itself, given that our father didn't know his brother until they were older. And now, the same thing's happening with our character and Lucia. Of course, they're not twins this time, but... Wow. Um, come on, Lucia, come and play. You can do nothing. We've tried twice now. We've tried twice, and it was 50% both times, so surely it should be guaranteed. I'm joking. Uh, growing up, I often sought the guidance of my mother. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Now we've got a real choice. I've always felt a strong bond with my mother... 50% chance of becoming deceitful, 50% of becoming paranoid, or Varys has always been like a father to me. 33% chance of diligent, 66% chance of deceitful. I, I actually really like that. I didn't even know that was an outcome, to be honest with you. I just said that purely like, oh, you probably view Varys as a father, given that he's been there since he was a baby, but maybe he actually does. What's our opinion of them, then? So Varys is, uh... Your opinion of Varys, minus 39. Look, he's educating us. We're frustrated with him. That's understandable. Of our mother, it's plus 27. <sighs> the thing is, I do think Varys has 
always been like a father to him. It's the only kind of father figure he's known. He's been his educator, his guardian. But I think in this case, we're going to pick the mother. Uh, just because he has a higher opinion of her. Deceitful or paranoid? Again, paranoid. Not necessarily good. Not necessarily good in that situation. Plus three intrigue is fantastic. 100% stress gain? Absolutely not. But it will help out for an intrigue character that makes a lot of enemies. Varys might not approve. But I think, I think that's okay. I don't think that's bad at all. I can see the moment my hawk might have spotted something on the horizon. His whole being seems to shift as he transforms from a prized pet to an attentive hunter before I even have time to blink. I follow his gaze, but whatever that is he saw, I cannot... No, wait! There it is, a tiny hazy outline against the cloudy sky, but it's undeniably there. Eyes like a hawk for five years gives hostile skin resistance plus four. My god. Every event we're getting... The one that gives the scheme power from Impatient is fantastic. Uh, both this character's mother and Varus being incredible intrigue characters. No matter what we got from that event, no matter what we chose, we've gotten some intrigue benefit. And now the pet's contributing as well. This is becoming a bit of a perfect storm. He's got 30 in intrigue at the age of 10. Is he? He's not going to be quite the 37 intrigue monster his father was. But this is going to be very close. My spies have informed me about a hunter causing a ruckus at a local tavern. The man has been spending a large amount of gold bragging about... Uh, sorry, large amounts of gold and bragging about the great deal he struck with a fancy lady in pearls and silk. Apparently, he drew a map of the local hills for the unknown woman. The spies must think the lady must be scheming against me or one of my subjects. We're paranoid now. It's clearly something his mother said to him has, uh... Has affected him. Belongs in the dungeon. He is a traitor. And we become more vigilant. We still... We gain the stress either way. We gain less stress if we bin him off. Get him in the prison. If you're going to be paranoid, we embrace the paranoia. Oh, <gasps> What? Okay, we've got a few things happening here which are worth noticing. Number one, let's deal with this. As I look upon a young Naperer walking by, uh, sweaty with labor, but a blush on her cheeks, I'm entranced. What is this feeling? This longing. Oh... He seems, that, he seems to think that Malia is very attractive. You realize that you're heterosexual. Or, I know she's only a commoner, but oh my heart. Um, you're not particularly lustful. You were curious and impatient. You know what? Send it. You see this hideous looking face? My god. Here's what's more impactful. Our mother was assassinated. She died under mysterious circumstances. Who killed her? Maybe it was Varys. Again, I don't... Th I, I like to think in my head that Varys and her were certainly close, but very possible it could have been Varys. Maybe it could have been Lord Galfred. We just don't know. We haven't heard from him in years and years. He's been off fighting this war. And actually, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. Speaking of this war, should be ending any moment now, in theory. There we are, 100%. Should keep things nice and... Nice and tidy. Okay, here we are. My guardian Varys spoke to me about the capital sentence that a lowly thief was being given two days ago. He wanted to know what I thought of such a harsh penalty for a small crime. It was too much. The punishment should match the crime. We gain just. Minus three intrigue, plus two stewardship, plus one learning. This kid's paranoid. He hasn't exactly had a track record of doing just things. Guy writes a map, we throw him in prison. This is not the law of a godly realm. He becomes cynical. Intrigue, plus two learning, plus two. That's interesting. Should be satisfied with what we have. Well, Varys is, uh... We've already got some conflicting traits with Varys. I mean, my heart tells me we go for cynical. I don't like just for this character. I don't think it suits him with everything else he's got going on. A paranoid, impatient man is not going to be... Doesn't really seem to correlate with just, at least in my mind. Temperate? Maybe. Maybe that one works quite well, actually. Maybe that does work quite well. But you know, I've got to take cynical. You know I've got to try this here. I, I mean, Varys would probably be quite a, quite a cynical guy, I think. Especially given everything he's seen. His character has... has he, I mean, he's also lost both of his parents at this point. I think he would be cynical. I think I think that probably would. Oh, no. Oh, our hawk, Bethany's health has declined. That was the one given to us by the High Septum. Okay. We won the war led by King Stannis, the Manus of the Iron Throne, against Willis. And, oh, God. The Trench Regency swings the scales by another 10. I mean, maybe that's Varys' final test for us, right? Oh my god, you've gifted us a monkey named Malia. How lovely. Holy shit. We got a monkey. Oh my god. We have started a whole... I was about to say we've started a menagerie, but that's actually the... That's actually exactly what it is, yeah. Wow. 
Well, there's an option to release the pet. I feel like releasing a monkey into the court might be a terrible idea. Oh, Regent Further's mandate, though. Hey, Varys, nice work. We should probably check if he's self... He is self-interested. Opinion of you, plus 15. Diligent, positive opinion, plus 25. So actually, it's very, very close. So the plus 50s cancel out. The plus... So actually, he's plus 5 overall. It's just not enough, I suppose, to get him on our side. Raise him to nobility as a gift. Maybe when we become old enough, we get we give him that as a gift for his for his service to the realm. It becomes Lord Barris of House something. I kind of like that as an idea, but let's see. Fearless Nihilist. Oh, now that is a good personality for a character who lost his father so young that he doesn't even remember. Lost his mother to another random murder and has been raised by Varys. The treacherous antagonist, a fearless nihilist. I like that. Laying foundations. The loose gravel underfoot crackles as Molly and I trudge through it. It brings mind, uh, brings to mind the craggy, craggy stories of buildings across the realm. I want to build something, Malia bur blurts out, clearly sharing my thoughts. We should construct something here in this garden, a model of some kind. She immediately starts scanning our surroundings, looking for materials. As Malia scams herself towards a nearby stack of wood, I ponder more on the nature of activity. Build what, precisely? Hill forts to sharpen our swords. Plus one marshal. Manor houses to teach us the value of money. Plus one stewardship. Something big like markets. This will further your intrigue education focus. Hello. Or our very own sensor of learning like monasteries. No, no, no. Let's go for that then. Markets increasing intrigue? Okay, sure. Sure, why not? He has got 16 intrigue at the age of 11. This is good though. Oh my god, this is good though. Holy shit. But anyway, when he comes of age as well, we could potentially marry someone quite decent. So we're looking at maybe like a 25 stewardship, depending on who we marry. As I enter my chambers, I'm greeted by mayhem. Things are strewn everywhere and a few things that aren't ripped up are covered in feathers. Sleeping in the midst of destruction, my hawk, Midas. Oh, how ironic. Um, I was the last drop. Get him out of my sight. Never. Never. Listen. Midas giveth, Midas taketh us away. Oh my god. Okay, he's taking taketh away a little bit too much there. Stress 90 out of 300. Hey, where are my pets now? Where's my pet stroking action? Oh. My lecherous Castellan John is up to something. I know it. Why else would he skulk about like so? Give me those odd looks. And things are not where I've left them. Has he been in my chambers? He smiles so sweetly, but I know what lurks underneath. Varys. Investigate. 100% chance of Varys finding something if he is hiding something. Oh. Varys concluded his investigation, and he has found him empty-handed. Found no proof of criminal activity or dark deeds, not even rumors. Better safe than sorry. He seems innocent. There were no negative consequences to that, but it was worth... Uh, I mean, of course, we've got to play into the paranoia now. So that's a very key part of this character. Oh, right on cue. Look at that. Flappy. As I stroke Flappy's yellow feathers, I feel my worries dissipating. Thank you, my friend. Minus 10 stress. It's not massive. When you got three hawks and a monkey... It's very possible that <laughs> maybe we can stroke the monk. Oh, careful. Whoa. Careful there. Maybe it's possible that we could, um... Oh, God, no. My hawk, Bethany... Is this going to break him down? Oh, I thought it would stress him out. It sh probably should stress him out. My hawk, Bethany, has been a source of companionship and wonder over the years. But even though she is still young, she's been distant and ailing as of late. So I kneel beside her. She heaves a sigh of contentment, but seemingly cannot find the strength to lift her head. Oh... I listen to the soft sound she makes in her sleep. I listen to the ever lengthening pause in between hails. I listen to silence. That is horrible. I hate that. I will miss you, Bethany. You lost a hawk. Well, I mean, you gain stress for pretty significant, massive things. That was kind of, that was obviously like a bit more of a personal moment. And Midas is taking the edge off too. That's, that's nice. I like that. And maybe he wasn't necessarily so broke up about it that it would be a long-term stress. You know, she died content being petted by him and i like that it's a nice end that's that's the, the perfect ending for that hawk the polyglot oh as i wander across the courtyard a scrap of parchment swirls in the breeze i catch it but the strange strokes dubbed onto it are unlike anything i've ever seen ah you found my note sensing my amusement he taps the scrap reassuringly it's another language my little lord don't worry i can read it but you needn't bother yourself with it for now teach me the language he knows another language we can't find out what he knows. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, sure. Teach me. So that's a learn language scheme against Varus. This is interesting. Does it even... Can we even do a scheme at this point? I don't think it works, right? No, I didn't think so. So he does know a different language. So we'll, we'll have to investigate that further. And we can always just do that scheme later down the line. So we're selling 336 gold. And maybe at this point, we might want to spend a little money trying to get... 
Some taxes? What do you think? Go for anything that might help out just a little bit. Take the edge off, because we're not making much money. Water wheels. Oh, right, because we're on a river. So shut up pretty good. 0 0.3 per month. Reduces building construction cost. It's not bad at all, actually. Um, what else? We've got a trade port. 0 0.1 per month. We've got apiaries. I like that. Or oh, we've got a god's God's garden for now, but eventually becomes a god's wood. No, let's build those water mills. That seems like a solid investment. Cubes is 146 left over. I said if we have money spare, we'd do it. I think it's good to keep some in the bank. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, not another animal. My lord, a guard approaches me with a fox in tow. Found this creature. What should we do with it? It's a fucking fox. Leave it alone. Why are you asking me that? Give it to someone or should we keep the fox? Oh, we've got to keep the fox. This kid's got a soft side for animals. What are we going to name the fox? Name it Lord. Ah, oh, I like that. I feel like this kid, 13 years old, he'd probably just call it like Shadow or or Edge or Umbra. We're going we're gonna to name it Lord. I feel like that's, that's like edgy enough in a Game of Thrones context, right? What a great name. The Lord Fox. Oh, hide and peek. Hello. The wardrobe in the servants' quarters is the best hiding spot. I'm a hide-and-seek genius. As I peek through the small gap between the doors, I see Irma, Sande, and Harold suddenly burst in through the door. Oh, my winsome stallion, I can't wait to get you out of those clothes. Irma Sande grunts, her hands grasping all over his body. Take me, take me now, you vixen! Harold moans loudly, throwing himself on the bed. What are they? Oh, I was not supposed to see this. Irma Sande is beautiful like a goddess. Now this looks way more fun than hide-and-seek. Or, my poor innocent eyes, make it stop. Poor innocent eyes. You thought he was curious. He's curious. Yeah. I wouldn't say he's be she's beautiful like a goddess, but getting lustful? What do you think? Ooh. Does give plus two intrigue. Oh my god, it's another plus two intrigue, is it? His mother was lustful. I'm not saying it's like, you know, an inherited trait, but... I don't think Chase suits him. A curious character being chased? No. Let's take lustful. Boom. 19 intrigue at the age of 13. This kid is absolutely becoming a chip off the old block. And to say that he didn't even have, like, the highest education outcome possible, I think he's still going to be very, very good. I mean, don't get me wrong, we still get that tier 4 education, right? Even without necessarily having the right trait for it. Oh, no, don't, don't blame Varys. The voice of my guardian Varys drones on and on as he lectures me about, for the umpteenth time, on the proper ways of a lord, interspersed with the austere quotes from the seven-pointed star. Clearly, this is all very important for my future, but would anyone really notice that I snuck out once or twice, maybe to play? <sighs> what do you think? Impatient, paranoid, cynical, lustful. Bit of effort couldn't hurt. Why study when you can play? Just really push him. Knowledge is key to the universe. I feel like, mm, I don't know. How, how do you want to interpret impatient? Is he so impatient, even though he's this massively stressed out, he's just going to see it through anyway? He just wants the knowledge now, even though it might be better to pace him? Paranoid, cynical. Ah. I, I want to take this one. I do. I'm just not sure. Do we just absolutely send it? Curious. Knowledge is the key, of, key to the universe. Sure. Let's see what the stress outcome is like. Let's do it. I like the idea of this kid developing some sort of negative aspect to his personality. I mean, you could debate everything he's got so far as negative in some way, right? As I walk the corridors of my palace frustrated, many of the courtiers seem to be droning on about some sort of problem they're having in Briarcrest. Which they would shut up and fix it themselves. So out of the seven, I'll punch someone. Irritable. Ooh. Get a little bit more dread. We can unleash our anger. Maybe with a new cloak, I'd feel better. It becomes a profligate. Or just mindless chatter. Nothing to do with me. At this point, look. You're 13. You're 13. It's natural to be stressed out by your education. You should just sit on it, shut up, and listen. 21 intrigue, though. I'm liking this. At the age of 14, too. This kid's coming out great. Oh. My God. I find yet another of Midas' favorite nesting spots empty, and I feel my worry growing. I haven't seen him in days. I notice... Well, this motherfucker! I notice a crop... What?! As I cross the courtyard, I stumble upon my uncle, Lord Galfred, penning a letter by hand in pen. He smirks as he sees me. He runs his hand over his quill. His brand new brown quill. Are you shitting me? What is this game smoking? How has it done this? Are you telling me that Lord Galfred... He was rivals with our previous character because he killed a childhood pet. We confront him about the disappearance of our bird. Combine prowess and diplomacy check. 
37% chance he admits to having killed Midas. 62% chance he feigns ignorance. What's the meaning of this? He feigns ignorance. Are you telling me he's killed Midas? Oh my god, it's gone. I am in awe. I am so furious. This man will die. I swear to God, I cannot believe this. <sighs> we murder him. We murder him. We murder him right now. We can't prove it, but we think he killed our bird. Maybe the bird comes back, depending on the uh, on the outcome of the quest. I don't know. Varys has spent his whole life. Oh my God, uh, we need to be careful of our stress here. Varys has spent our whole life training us for intrigue. Teaching us the ins and outs. We're not going to be ignorant to what our job is going to be as a character with high intrigue at this point. I would certainly hope not. Otherwise, Varys has done a terrible job. And now, we think he's taken our bird. This kid was already so, so, so goddamn stressed out. So stressed out. And then his favorite pet, his beloved pet, that he inherited from his father, the last bloody memory he had, disappeared. And coincidentally, Uncle Galfred, the man who killed the father and killed our father's dog, has a new pen. I mean, that's enough for anybody to break down and try and commit a murder. Well, on the plus side, we do still have our fox. That is, of course, until Uncle Galfred gets a new cloak, no doubt. Unbelievable. I, I'm actually so in awe of that. I need to look at the event and, and peek behind the curtain because I've got to see why the game chose him of all characters. The chance of that seems so unfathomably slim. That is amazing. That's amazing. He's discovered our murder scheme. He doesn't know it's us, but I think at this point... Look, we acted out of passion. It's been a couple of months. Maybe he's simmered down. He's stroking his fox. He's friends with the fox. His stress level has dropped a little bit. Not massively, but a little bit. He's getting to grips with things. And that's that's the important part. We can only take some decisions now that we're, we're slightly older, right? Can we do... Take a bow of poverty. No, thank you. Can we do anything that might help with our stress not right now unfortunately not really much we can do there we are 15 oh there is something here the sun beats down as malia and i take a trip around the garden she turns to me when we're older will we be married my quizzical expression clearly prompts a follow-up we're both of age we should surely be married it's our destiny consider the possibility quietly my passion burns so brightly surely there can be no future for me without malia of course we will become besotted but we're paranoid oh a lot can change She's going to be very upset. But my he's cynical. I think cynicism would play more into it than paranoia. But he's also lustful. Maybe that's why he doesn't want to get married. Oh, that makes sense. Sorry, a lot can change. He can't make that promise. He's a lord. He's an intelligent lord too. So he will understand that we will have a duty to marry, presumably, someone highborn. The kid's not an idiot. Oh, God. Flappy. Pay for treatment. Flappy's health is stabilized. Gallard, you are going to get yourself a knighthood if you keep going like this, my friend. Quid pro quo. My guardian virus strides confidently into a little study, clutching a sheaf of parchment. My lord and lord, as your regent, I need a little extra authority to take over a matter of import. Be so kind and sign these documents. Of course, I never approach Wendy Hamdid. For this small favor, I'll have letters to a friendship written to fellow vassals of King Stannis, making you friends with the, uh, making you friends in the Seven Kingdoms of the Iron Throne. All you have to do is scrawl the letters. We gain a good reputation amongst our fellow vassals. Um, okay. You overreach, Varys. His loyalty would go from situational to self-interested. Oh, he's, sit he's situational right now. We are winning him over. He will be upset because we've insulted him. How tiresome. Can't we talk about something else? You give Varys a free hand, but no endorsement. It will remain situational loyalty. The swings of power will only swing by five. We lose 20 stress and he gains 20 opinion of us because we're pleased. Um, good repute with fellow vassals. Fellow vassal opinion plus 20. Let's go with this one. I'm going to pick this one because mainly because it's a stress loss, but also because it's, uh, you know, it's personality based, which is exactly what I'm here for. It's, it's personality based. and We've got to try and lose a little bit of stress because I'm worried that our guy's pushed a little bit too far with his, with his impatience there. 22 intrigue though, at the age of 15. Just a few more months to go and then we'll see if he has come out well. I remember fondly all the good times I had with Malia when we were younger. Even now as she is into the world of adults, she will always be dear to me, though she never did return my feelings. You stop having a crush on her, but that was the end of it. I'm lucky to have gotten to know her. Fair enough. Fair enough, honestly. I'm glad that ended the way it did. 
Ooh, a mirror. There's a glasssmith living nearby who can make glasses very clear, an extremely difficult feat to achieve. Consider buying a hand mirror made by this fella. And today, even as I visited his shop to see some of his artwork lined up, all in all, I'm impressed. There's no doubt to his skill. Well, there, it shows me a mirror in particular. Uh, after seeing it but once, I swear there must be something magical or ethereal about it. Supposedly, it goes without saying for the most expertly made mirrors. I'm very tempted to buy it. Driven opinion plus four, attraction opinion plus four. Um, I can't afford to buy this. Make me one good hand mirror. There's a clutter artifact. Oh, because he's lustful, he wants it. So he's more attractive, I understand. Sure. Sure, we'll take it. What's wrong with a bit of frivolous spending? Um, my fox lord prances into the garden just as I'm heading inside. Another fox is walking behind him. Oh, God. Lord's opinion of you increases. We've just got two foxes. We've got Lord. So Lord is a mischievous male fox, and we're just about to get our second fox here. Uh, beloved. Cole. Knight. Oh, what type of fox is it? Let's have a look first before I name it. This is the important stuff, of course. We don't know. Um, let's call you Beloved. I like that. What a great name. What a great name. Skittish male. Oh dear. Your house is going to stink. Foxes are not the nicest thing. To, as wild foxes are not the nicest thing to keep indoors. And here we have it. A few more days. And then Lord Anseric will turn of age. And my god. We can already see it right there. Oh my god. With the help of Varus, I have achieved an understanding of intrigue far greater than that of any of my peers. To reach so far in the subject has been truly gratifying. To take my first steps into adulthood, I find myself reminiscing about some of the people who have made an impact on the man I've become. The friendship that I shared with Caroline meant a lot to me when we were both young. To have her by my side means a lot. The memorable times I had with Malia helped me truly understand both myself and love. You gain the trait, elusive shadow. The best possible outcome. My god. 28 intrigue at the age of 16. We have not yet picked our focus, which of course if we pick scheming or whatever it is will give us another plus three. We are so close to catching up with the mighty Lord Merrick. I mean, he was good. Like he had 16 intrigue as his, what was his base? Base of five, ruthless, ambitious, intricate, web weaver, intelligent, mute. Bruce more minus four. So we had 20 as his kind of so it's baseline, so to speak. Take off minus two from assistant with Castellan. We're actually much better than he ever was. We, we've actually we've we've improved on the previous generation, and is that much of a surprise? Varus guiding us, of course, that early influence from his mother before she was sadly taken before her time. This is insane. Rational nihilist. I like that as a personality type. That's nice. That's nice. Grim, a little bit bitter, perhaps, of all the thing that's happened. Very accepting of death, but not. A lunatic. Not going to be just some wanton murderer. Not going to be scheming for the sake of scheming. Doing it for reasonable means, I hope. This is amazing. But of course, now we've got a whole slew of problems. We're now a lord in a realm of our own. Our regent, lovely sweet Varys, uh, is situationally loyal. We might just be able to end the entrenched regency very soon. We swing the scales back. We might be able to win him over with a little gift here and there. Then we can hopefully get that tidied up without much of an issue. We can create a cadet branch. Hello. Seen as the black sheep of their noble house. Oh, God. We move away. Oh. House opinion minus 15. What would be better? Make the cadet branch or overthrow the main branch these are all things for us to consider at a different time for now let's leave it there for today thank you for joining me obviously this episode was massively long compared to the others they're not all going to be this long i like to get the children's education done in one episode because we don't drag this out over two episodes it's a bit too slow for that right there's barely anything happening for the most part you can't really undertake many decisions we've had some fantastic story elements the bit with the the almost comically disney villain-esque uncle at this point coming back to court just to kill people and kill pets is absolutely hilarious is a piece of shit and i cannot wait to murder him see you all exactly when we do that and of course a thank you to the people who give me the times who do everything that it is that's not right <laughs> everything is that i do here i was like what the hell just happened there for a second thank you to vonerath warseeker 9994 said so talks a lot chicken robo ayaba deadwood sabine shadow hill cow aladdin birdman prince Typhos, Shantner's Bassoon, Texas Yardbird, MGS to Tech Sound, Facundo Vasquez, Wazi, Brambio, Triquitral, 
Vincent Van Gill, Mothbot, and Hoaxel for their support. The executive producer is over on Patreon. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for making this possible. This is a fantastic story so far with some insane coincidences, if nothing else. Thank you as well to Elias Wahlberg, Fatigable, Jason R. King, Luffy Link 3, Mithrin, Watchman, Captain Tess, Lassero, Lady Adax, Earl Silver, Justin Wallace, Nylanthria, NZ Smithsey, Toasty Buns, and Zelif as well. See you all very soon.